Hello, I'm John Fan, a staff member here at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. And today I'm joined by Yawuza Al Hassan, representing the group Wooza Wooza, who you can see in a concert video on LOC.gov or on the library's YouTube channel as part of the Home Grow at Home series for 2022. Um, how are you doing today, Yawuza? I am wonderful. Well, well, thank you so much for joining us and, and thank you for being part of the Home Grow at Home series. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your path into the dance and music performance traditions that we're seeing in the video. How, do, how did you get into this? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I want to welcome your listeners and uh, viewers and also give a big thanks to the uh, the Congress of uh, American Congress of Library, Library of Congress for this uh, groundbreaking opportunity to talk about myself and the uh, group Uza Uza, African Music and Dance Ensemble in New York. Um, it started when I didn't know about life, very young at the Chief's Palace. That was where I started because my grandfather was one of the, the chiefs in the village. So as they were performing at the chief palace every month, especially when it's festivity seasons. So I just observed, I learned just by observing. And at the age of seven, because I could not join the, 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 the professional group, I organized milk tin and I call my peers to, you know, transfer the rhythm I had into beat on the, uh, into beat using the milk tin. So as small as I was, I was able to organize my peers to form a little group. So through that, the bigger group saw us and they were able to, you know, give us some little bit experience. But along the line, they realized that my little group was taking the attention. Because whenever there is a wedding ceremony or adoring or naming ceremonies in the village or festival, without invitation, I go with my group. Okay. And we seem to get more attention. So the bigger group, the, the adult group, they realize that, no, if they don't take care, we, we will end up dominating them. Because one of the chief, sub-chiefs saw us and said he is going to adopt us. So he started to buy us the real instrument. Okay. So the, the adult group said, no, they have to take me away as the leader from the group. So they took me from the, 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 the group. And my first performance, it was in one of the college called Tatko. That is Tamale Training College. On that night, when we are dancing, you will see everybody is allowed to come and show appreciation. And they show the appreciations by putting money on your forehead. That's a form of appreciation and blessing and urging you to continue. So at Tatko, on this day, everybody was on me. So I got, I end up getting an amount that, <laughs> that I didn't even have used for, uh, you know, I didn't have used to, you know. And then because I was staying with my grandmother, after the show, they took me to my grandmother, grandmother and they said they are now going to keep me in the adult group. Uh -huh. So that was how, you know, I got to join the ad adult group. As small as I was, the director of the Ghana National Dance Company saw me in a video and also in the national television performing. And he sent a letter for them to come and bring me to come and join the national group the National Ballet of Ghana, which is called the National Dance Company at the National Theater of Ghana. So as they took me, so as they, as they took me, 
I was too small that I could not join the, the law wouldn't allow me to join the national dance company. So they allow me to join them, practice with them. And when school reopened, then they take me back to school. And then when, then when school is in vacation, then I will come back to the national troop, which is about five 5,000 miles away from the village I was staying, which is about two days drive. So I was going back and forth, back and forth until I finished my high school. And the National Dance Company adopted me. Okay. So through this, I was in the National Dance Company too, and the director and the Danish development also decided to initiate a project called Contemporary Dance in Africa. So then they used me and also do some audition around the nation for young, young people, young, determined, and talented men and women. So they used me and they selected best musicians and dancers to initiate this company called Noyam, oh. which is contemporary African dance. So the Danish Development Agency, they send students from USA, from Europe, and, and around the world to come and impact on us. And this was the first contemporary and second cycle school in Africa, that's Ghana. In Ghana. So I am a pioneer in yeah. contemporary dance in Ghana. So this that is, is how, how, I, how far I came. That's, that's quite a promotion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you were moving back and forth from, from school to the national company and then into this contemporary thing as, at a young age. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Yes. And then, and then, um, in the national dance troupe, you're presenting styles and traditions from all over Ghana. Is that correct? Perfect. Yeah. Correct. And so you were learning those both from your home era, Harry, bringing that, but learning styles and traditions representing ethnic groups and communities all over Ghana. Exactly. And that's okay. how, as I grew, you know, as I grew up in it, it was like a, a pure natural talent. Mm -hmm. So I end up learning all the rhythms, the drumming, the beat, the music, the movement, the songs of every area in Ghana. And through that, I was able to speak the language. Mm. Through the music and the songs, I was able to pick the languages very easily. That's how I end up speaking about five different languages from Ghana through the national dance troupe and performing all their music, sings, drum, and then also leave it because I was leaving it. <laughs> yes, and also many parts of African countries. I do all that because I learned it through the, uh, from the company. How many years were you with the National Dance Company of Ghana? I think I was when I, uh, as I was saying, as I finally moved to the National Dance Troupe, even though I was still under age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they, they, you know, they needed me so bad. I think I would say I would have been around 16, 17. Okay. I would have been around 16, 17. And then I spent like two, three years, two no, I'm not sure it's up to like around one and it could be between two, two to three years. And then this initiative came. Okay. And uh, from the Danish development. And because the director know, know my potentials and that he, he know how interested and enthusiastic I was to learn. So he put me into the academic to make sure I have both. And then I I was the only one he allowed to his library in his okay. house. 
he took me, the, the director took me as his son. I was eating the food he eat in his house. He gave me books to read. And then he keep me in his study where no one enter, even not even his children. Oh, okay. And then after that, because I realized that there, there, are, a lot, there, there, are, there are a lot of challenges that many people can, many talented people cannot go into the national dance troupe. I, I, I just realized it. And then, so after this school, the contemporary dance school, I, I give back for about three years and I initiated my own company called Wuza Wuza. Okay. So Wuza Wuza started back in Ghana. Okay. So I initiated to give an opportunity to the to the to my colleagues and good artists who were not able to meet the challenges or qualify to join the national dance troupe so that was how Wuza Wuza started to give okay. opportunity to the people who were not who were not able to get the opportunity to the national dance troupe i had the opportunity i was i was discovered as as so you know i was discovered so early Mm -hmm. But during the auditions, I realized that there are good dancers and musicians who who, the, who who were not able to qualify to get to the top. So when I finished my studies, then I initiated Wuza Wuza to give this opportunity to them. And by then, I had already started touring Europe and America here. So I got some money. And then with the help of people who believe in me, they, they supported me to build a cultural center in Accra, just by the beach, okay. 10 minutes from, 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 from the beach. And I also built a place that interested people from elsewhere in the world can come and stay with, you know, and they have private rooms, you know, where students can come and study. And I also initiated a, an event called Africa Art, where I organized study tour to everyone in the world two times a year so that students can come and learn professors can, can can come and do their research and then you know pass it on to the next generation so because so because i have the experience and I, so it is easier to realize all these challenges that musicians and dancers need in the world and people around the world who are interested to learn about african music and dance and research I provided this, this accommodation for mm. everyone. So as I initiated that, I was able to pick a lot of potentials who were not able to qualify to be in the national dance troupe. And I accommodated them. They had the, a place to sleep. They have a place, a place to rehearse, a space to rehearse, and then studio to learn. So I end up recruiting about 50, 50 young men and women where we all stay at one place. When, when uh, people come, uh, other students and professors come from abroad and they expatriate, they also come and join us. So for okay. example, you would have, if you are going for research, you would have lived with the indigenous people. You oh. would have lived with the musicians and dancers in the same place. So you have ended up eating the dance and the music and your research, then you will have true, true information that a researcher would have struggled to have because you would have had people from diverse, uh, from different, 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 different parts of Ghana. Okay. Living together, eating together, dancing together, playing music and dance, uh, and, and then, you know, socializing together so it sounds so, like wooza wooza is more than a than a performance group it's an experience exactly so this was what i was doing and then and the year, every year i have to uh you know cycle of uh you know study tour for the expatriate and then the researchers and students as well around the world mm -hmm. yes so and this center back in ghana is called wooza okay which is a global art and cultural center 
okay where you 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 can you know come for your research for study tour and you know also transit artist can just pass through for, for a night or two and then proceed okay so this is some of the you know the track record you can see from me from how i begin to where i've gotten to and then finally to the united states of america and and so now you and wooza wooza are based in new york city is that correct yes please yeah what what brought you to new york city uh we are we, we are just by the yankee stadium okay yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah some people so call it Harlem, some people call it bronze okay <laughs> um so who who is a member of wooza wooza currently who do we see in the video uh we have maria magariba mm -hmm. she was also part of the national dance troupe oh, okay yeah in ghana when i started the wooza was i started it with them back in ghana and then esther dodru she's also a mem uh, she's also a member of the Ghana Dance Ensemble. Okay. And then also we have uh, Kubit. Kubit was also, when I started, he was just, he, he was small, very small, so, but he was far away from the center. And then he was dancing with a group called, one, one of my senior brother group called uh, Sakumo. Okay. And then we also have um, Baba. Baba was also part of Sakumo. And then uh, Hola Kuti. Hola was also, when I launched Uza Uza at the British Council, I remember the British Council supported the launch in Ghana. So Hola Kuti was, Hola too was part of it. And then, and then, you know, and we have Niboy. Niboy is also from, from, from another part of, of, of Ghana. And all these people I'm mentioning, they are all from different parts of Ghana. Okay. So you see, so Wuza Wuza is like, like Ghana, Ghana National Dance dance Troupe, but even beyond that, because we have the, the experience in Wuza Wuza is beyond the national dance level. Because this was something that, an idea that the former president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Mm -hmm. The man who lead Ghana to independence. I don't know if you've heard of him. Oh, yes. He has a great relationship, yes, with Marcus Gavi and all that. He's very well known. Exactly. And Martin Luther King, I, I remember our independence day. I saw them to the to the Blast Star Square. Mm. So, so Kwame Kuruma's idea was to, to unite the country. To unite the country through our traditional music and dance. Mm -hmm. So he called uh, one man called Professor Mauri Poku, who was good in dance, who was a dance director, and then Professor uh, Emeritus Kobnan Ketia. And this Professor Kobnan Ketia, when he saw the launch of Wuza Wuza and my presentation at the British Council, he said he was not expecting such a perfection. And he he volunteered, he said, I will be your life patron. Oh. Yes. And Professor Emeritus Kobnan Ketia, he told me about the intention of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah for initiating the National Dance Ensemble at the University of Ghana. Mm. And he put it in such a, in such a way that if you are a student of law, a doctor, medicine, or whatever, you, you should be able to pass the dance at your, at, at your first year in the University of Ghana. You should mm. be able to pass your, mu your traditional music and dance. Otherwise, you will not, you will not proceed mm -hmm. to the next level. And he did this for people to re recognize how important traditional music and dance and culture is. So I was blessed to have been adopted by this great man, mm. Professor Inketia, yeah. who was also 
a student of my former boss from the national dance company the one who discovered me okay so i don't see myself as as a i don't see that it's my talent that brought me but yeah otherwise it would have looked like i am i am bragging and I, yes but i would say it's a blessing to have met my boss boss who saw my my presentation and adopted me and my group uh, that's quite a lineage exactly so yeah. and that is the spirit of the uh, of the of, of, of culture traditional music and dance it is it is to unite us and let us recognize each other our differences our differences should not separate us it should rather unite us mm -hmm. so i was blessed to have met these great men who took me you know and then embraced me with all their heart mind and soul the same professor Nketia also uh, he told me that i'm the only one he took to his study room in his house he also opened his house for me wow he also started giving me books to read and he said you are going to go around the world and then i did he that's, that's me, amazing many many around. years ago i had the honor of meeting professor and katia that would be 2000 and that was 2005 okay 2005 at the lunch and then i remember at the completion of my uh, of the contemporary dance school his signature was on the certificate i never knew i'll get the opportunity to meet him wow so you see how the connection is mm -hmm. so when you are in the art truly you know it will connect you with the right people and you get the right support yeah I, for example today i never knew i'll get the this groundbreaking opportunity to be interviewed by you <laughs> you see so professor Nketia briefed me about the intention of kwame kurma mm. so i pick it up yeah I pick it up and I try to go beyond it because we are living in a global village now in this world. So after I, uh, after I had the opportunity to be meeting Professor Nketia, he keep on briefing me and giving me the tricks how to make the music better. Mm. Because he told me, I, and I asked questions. I asked him about high life. He told me high life is not a traditional music. Mm. And he is the father of high life. He told me that high life is is a is a modern style, which we the British adopt for their ballroom music and dance during the colonial mm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, colonial period. So he told me. So you have to make it better. And even move on so that you would have continue the tradition in a in, in, you know in your contemporary context mm -hmm. so and then i said okay thank you professor so what i did was at the end of the whole thing i also invented something we call afrikiki okay which which is also a form of music and dance which is a and it, it is a development of our traditional dance element okay and the music in uh, music element so and i call it afrikiki and, the, and then the whole ghana started to adopt it and i did it because the professor told me even i asked him a question professor how do you see the music today people are singing high uh, hip life Mm -hmm. you know like the like like the hip hop version of america mm -hmm. how do you see it and he told me that if he was young like me he would have also done it <laughs> <laughs> so are there examples of that afrikiki in the performance video that you 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 submitted ah uh, there is no no i did not do okay. it yes well, i, I want to learn about some of the pieces in that video do, is there a favorite piece because you have what, five or six pieces in the video yes the one you want to talk about uh the one i want to talk about i think you choose one and then i'll talk about it i choose one okay what, yes. a, what about bewa the second one yeah the Be bewa is a uh, is very interesting 
because bewa is a it also has a connection to what is happening today okay and in our our african music we have the the history aside the history there is a benefit what 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 happened mm -hmm. and then how it is today like the connection of it with 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 the today's world situation so bawa was as a result of bounty harvest okay so in 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 the part of ghana that we call upper west the people living there they are called dagati and dagati they come from a a clan or a lineage called bewa bewa is from one of the the Ab, um, noah the noah in the bible one okay. of the children of noah okay the grand the great grandchildren of noah and this man called bewa was a warrior the warrior and very tall he has powers who could just stand like when a bird is flying if whenever he's hungry he doesn't have to climb a tree to go and pluck a mango to eat he would just stand he was so tall that he could just stand and then grab it okay grab the mango from the tree and start eating and when he want to eat meat he just wait and the bed is flying he could just kite the bed and they start eating and, or you know prepare it slaughter it and then go and you know prepare his meal barbecue and eat so <laughs> So there was this, um, so Bewa was traveling. And then he got to uh, somewhere around the Mali in North America. Uh, no, mm -hmm. sorry, North Africa. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in North, Amer uh, uh, North um, uh, Africa. Mali is a big place. And they heard of Bewa, how, how tough he was. There was, and they had a problem at one of their dam this dam where they fetch their water where their animal eat okay. you, know, you know drink water there was this um buffalo who came to took over the dam and no one could go there and go and fetch water so they, they they were when they heard about they were they went and consulted him to come and save them so he came there at night and camped there. And when the, this animal came, he was able to conquer the animal. And they give a way for the people of Mali to come and start fetching their water for cooking, washing, and drinking. And they give him a wife in order to keep him there. <laughs> but he stayed there for some time and he proceeded. Okay. So when he proceeded, he got to a point that he stopped. And then his great grandchildren to proceed to Burkina Faso. And in the Burkina Faso, you hear a tribe called the Moshi. So he's, you know, they also proceed to Ghana. And when they went to Ghana, they continue to the to the most fertile land and the most level land called northern region okay which is tamale so at this place the Jewa has three three children and from these children in our setup the the men the women don't have to inherit the kings position okay they, they will give them another chief title which is equivalent to the paramount because they are women they will end up marrying and go to someone's house but they will still maintain the same the the same title you know equivalent 
to the Paramount Kings, you know, title. So these people who do the Bawa, the, the Bawa dance, they are one of the one of the Bewa aunties. Okay. So every offspring of Bewa is an uh is a playmate. I you know if your wife if your wife give birth to a baby girl, your younger brother or your senior brother will be a playmate to this girl. Mm -hmm. So it means that your children and your younger brother or your senior brother's children, they will become playmates mm -hmm. according to the tradition of Bewa. Okay. So this was how the Degati people move to the upper part of the region because our aunties children begin to develop and become big so they move towards to another settlement so where they went there was no rainforest but they like the the environment mm -hmm. they, they, because they are the the women children they move away from the paramount king so that they can also have a village by themselves with the same title equivalent to the paramount but not living in the same space as it as they say two ship uh, two captains cannot be in one ship <laughs> <laughs> then, there'll, then there'll be conflict exactly so that was why the people doing the the bower move a little bit further okay so as they were there there, there were no much rain so the, the brother have to always send them food in order to support them. So, but, 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 but they continue to struggle and, and get used to the environment. So as a result, any time they have abundant harvest mm -hmm. or bounty harvest, then they will come out, especially during the, during the, the moonlight. Okay. They will dance the whole night in in order to celebrate their blessings and send glory to the more to the Almighty. Okay. The Creator of heaven and the earth, who give them bounty harvest. So and during so this celebration, you will see them marrying around, you know, singing and dancing and doing movement. That depict happiness and the firmness on the ground and their connection to the mother earth, and then singing praises to the Almighty who have given them bounty harvest. And is that what's happening in that piece in the video? Yes, in the bower, instead of we, we didn't do the dance, but we do the music. Okay, yeah. So so I play the xylophone. Mm -hmm. I play the xylophone expressing this joy of bounty harvest. So this was how the Bawa dance and music came about. And well, the benefit, and, and if you look at the connection with it today, it's like the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Almost it affected everyone in this world, one way or the other. And what did it teach us? What did Bawa teach us? Or Bewa, Bewa lineage taught us? It taught us that we have to come together whenever mm. there is an issue or phenomenon. So that's why when the system moved move to the other part of the region, there was, there was drought and there's no abundant food. He was able to support the sister and the family there until the foods they started having you know good year and they started to celebrate by through and they started to celebrate through dancing music and dance which now become a tradition okay because they continue to do it every year till mm -hmm. today it is still done so the connection of it with today's world is when the covid 19 came countries 
we're also sharing the you know in uh version mm -hmm. around the world so all our traditional music and dance it teaches us it taught us this already yeah from the past how to support others how to come to, how to come together to build a community how to feel each other's pain like COVID-19, everybody wanted to see his brother still living. Friends still living because mm -hmm. it affected everyone one way or the other. So the, our traditional music and dance has already expressed that thousands, uh, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> and it remains relevant today, right? I think Ex Exactly. Yeah, well, well, I very much enjoyed the, the, the xylophone playing in, in that piece, that Bewa piece, so. Thank you. So. I think the viewers will as well. Um, I, when when coming up with the music or the choreography for Wooza Wooza, are you doing it on your own? Or are you working with the other members of the group to, to do a kind of collaborative development of the pieces? Yes, I always, I always say that our music and dance, it teaches us how to be humble. That, mm -hmm. that, that, that is the one thing I learned growing up. That is one thing I've observed. Even people, children who were almost gone astray, whenever they join the group, the group maintained them and groomed them and reoriented them. Mm -hmm. You see? So it is so important. That is why when I got here, I tried to maintain us because I see some people almost lost it mm. due to stress here. So I keep on bringing them together and bringing us and us and now almost eh, almost more than 30 people are on standby they, they want to come on board so when i have a, a performance i take some people it depends on on how much we are getting mm -hmm. and then also the transportation to get there is a challenge so because of this i try to keep us together mm you understand and it is because of the question you have asked mm. Mm. it teaches us how to be humble so whenever this this uh, opportunity come i do this because i want us when we stay together it keeps you so that people wouldn't have gone astray or mm -hmm. get influenced by negative negative you know aspect of the world or negative i call it negative incentives of the world well i think um you've done a great job of helping us understand both the meaning of wuza wuza you and us together as one exactly <laughs> and, and and it's a peace love and joy and spreading that through yes through yeah, yeah so and, and it's a combination of you know it's a it, it's a combination of uh, Akan language mm -hmm. from the south and the Bani language from the north. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so, you're, so you're, you're combining and, all of those parts. Yeah. Exactly, and and that leads to the question that you you also ask because we you know we must stick together mm. in order to save each other's life in order to maintain the spirit of sharing. Many people, some people think United States is dangerous or has some negative instrument uh, influence. And I said, no, it's the best place because it saves a lot of life. And it also, and it's also even give people the route to heaven. Mm. Because there are Muslims here, there are Christians here, and it's and there are and the best most uh, Islamic scholars are here. Mm. The the best Christian scholars are here, and when you are here, the best things are here. Mm. The best education is here. So, if it is easily for you, for United States to make you better than easily to get astray. Mm. So whilst we are together, I make sure that 
I remind them about this. Whilst reminding them to your question, you ask if I do the choreography alone or compose the music alone. No, in order to make everyone comfortable, I tell them that I am not directing you. We are working together. Mm -hmm. I am only speaking at a time. I am only doing it at a time. Another time, it will be your turn. Okay. Another time, it will be your turn. Because I don't want it a way that if I am not there, they will not proceed. Mm. That is not my dream. That's not my, my vision. And I remember when I was going for the visa to get here, the counselor asked me, you have been traveling a lot. What happened when you travel <laughs> and, and they have a performance? What will they do? Because I see your pictures. I see how the group is doing great with you. And then I told her, do you want them to come and perform? And then I'll sit by you to watch. She was so, <laughs> she was laughing. I said, yes, I have impacted everyone to be even better than me. So that if I'm not there, it will continue. So if no one is not there, it should continue. Mm. But with all humanity, I always tell them, I am not directing you. I always tell them we are all equal. Even three days ago, we were, we were rehearsing to go and, uh, and, and perform at Mount Venom okay. City Hall. During the, the rehearsals, we were playing the Afrobeat. And I told them, listen, everybody should feel comfortable because I had these new people that I'm now teaching. So... And I told them, feel comfortable. Tell me, don't be scared to make a mistake. Let's go on the stage, make the mistake. No problem, we are all equal. Mm. They were mad at me that why do I always say, say we are equal? They know I am the director and what, and I said, no, that's not the meaning of what we are doing. The meaning of what we are doing, our cultural music, traditional music and dance teaches us that is the major thing teaches us mm. to be humble mm -hmm. and recognize each other as brothers and sisters, no matter your color, no matter your race or whatever, or tribe. We are all equal. See me like that. And that's it. I am mm. only maybe leading for now. So when I'm doing the composition or the choreography, I ask them one person to, to go and stand and see if the meaning is making sense, the person will, uh, will say, yes, okay, yes, it makes sense. When we are doing the, the, the composition and the music, I ask one person to go and stand far away and listen. I told them, listen as an audience. Don't listen as an artist. Mm. One person will walk away and go and stand and listen. And I told them, okay, I, and I always tell them, tell, just be sincere. Tell me how you feel. We are all equal. And no policeman will arrest you for <laughs> telling the truth. So, <laughs> so we always do this. And I always submit myself to them. And I know that I am, as a leader, I am to save them. So sometimes when we even go to, to, to performance, when the money is not enough, I, I, I share to, to, to them. Then they say, no, 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 why do you do that? Why do that? And I say, no, you have to. Uh -huh. So because I'm setting examples, then they will know that, no, leadership is not to get, take everything and put in your pocket. I told them, no, we have, we are saving. Okay. Tomorrow it could be you. I always remind them tomorrow it could be you. Uh -huh. And we should always remember that it's tomorrow because the table can turn at any time. So the little money that I also get, I buy the costumes and the okay. drums. Okay. So, and I'm doing this to make them see that if one day any of them also get into this place, they should remember the matter of humanity. Mm -hmm. And when you are leading at a time, you must live by example. So even though, even though we have challenges, you know, but I don't look at it because we have so much talent and we have so much to give uh, four days ago we performed at yankees people were crying 
uh, just because of the presentation they saw. Mm -hmm. So people people need to be healed through our music and yeah. dance, the story and the history. Mm -hmm. Because some of the things that are happening today had happened already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with he hearing this, it gives hope. It brings hope for us to live. Yeah. So I always tell them, this is how it is. So anybody who also have contribution, they bring it. And I look at it with experience. If it's okay, then if I have to refuse it in a, in a nice way, and then I say, okay, keep it. Don't forget it. We might need it another time. Mm. And fully, sometimes we need it. So you'll bring it back in. And I'll bring it back. Well, I think the, the messages you, 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 you're sending through your performance and your work as a, as a leader, but as a, as a member of the community are so important. And I hope that the, the viewers of the video will, will get that joy and, and, and that, that, that sense of belonging by watching the performance. So I wanna thank you for being part of our, our Homegrown at Home series of, of concert videos. I wanna thank you, Yawuza, for your time today in the interview. And I just want to, to thank you for doing what you do. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. And then I also, and, and I'm so, I feel blessed to be part of this. Mm. And on behalf of my, my colleagues too, when I told them that this is what is going to happen, they were, you, you could see the joy in their faces. <laughs> well, yes. that's good. Well, tell them we say hello. <laughs> yes, I will do that. All right, well, thank you for your time. And uh, viewers, please be sure to watch the concert video by Wooza Wooza so you can see Yawuza and his colleagues dancing and singing and, 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 and bringing peace, love, and joy to everyone. So yes. thank you so much. Yeah, and I, and I would like to give them some spiritual hope through my flute. Okay. Thank you so much.